We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These words from the Declaration of Independence are familiar to many of us, and yet it took 143 years for women to get the right to vote and 189 years for black people to get the right to vote. And still today, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are still only words for many people. Here in Boston, life expectancy varies by 30 years, depending on where you live. In Roxbury, with many poor and black people, life expectancy is 59 years. In the Back Bay, wealthy and mostly white, life expectancy is 91 years. It's tough to have liberty when you are in prison. The United States incarcerates 716 people for every 100,000 people. Our rate of incarceration is more than five times higher than most countries in the world. Millions of people in our country don't have health care, a decent job, good education, a home they can afford, and that makes it pretty hard to pursue happiness. So on this show, you are going to meet people who are making it possible to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. People today who are making the words of the Declaration of Independence come true. Hi, my name is Michael Jacoby Brown, and I'm your host today for We Hold These Truths. And today we're very honored to have Henry de Groot, uh, one of the leaders of Mass Drivers United, which is attempting to organize drivers at Uber, Lyft, and other uh, organizations. Uh, Henry, can you tell me a little bit about what it's like to be uh, a driver? You've done it for how long now at Uber? Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. I've been yeah. an Uber driver for almost three years. Um, wow. And I also drive mostly with Uber, but also a little bit of Lyft, um, Amazon Flex, which is package delivery, I've done DoorDash, Postmates, Grubhub. Um, <laughs> a lot of I think it, the huh? only thing I haven't done is Instacart. So, okay, yeah. so you've you've been driving for quite a while for these organizations, and I know uh, uh, some of them, Lyft and Uber, are spending a lot of money to try to stop uh, uh, people like you and others from being considered employees. Can you tell me what it's really like to be a driver? What's the good, the bad, and the ugly? Yeah. So. Uh, being a driver does absolutely have positive sides to it. The flexibility, which the companies love to um, highlight in order mm -hmm. to, when they're trying to deny us our rights, there is a real side to that. Um, there's no schedules. You drive when you want to drive. You know, after this interview, I can hop in my car. Mm -hmm. As long as it's clean, I can turn the <laughs> app on. And uh, I think there's a bit of dog hair in there right now. But, okay. Um, you know, and I can start accepting rides um, here in Arlington, and I can drive, um, and as soon as I feel that I don't want to, I can stop. And the money in this area is, you know, it's never enough, but this is one of the best markets for driving, and especially the ride share, and I do XL, like a lar I have a SUV. The mm. money can be decent. It's definitely better than, you know, comparable uh, minimum wage jobs. I used to work at Dunkin' Donuts. It's far better than that. Better than Dunkin' Donuts. That's a great advertisement. Yeah, I, okay, I mean, I, I miss I, I miss working in a coffee shop, but it, right. it waking up, having to wake up at five in the morning to go in for a, a morning shift to make, you know, minimum wage plus maybe two bucks an hour in tips, having a manager breathing down your neck, um, mm -hmm. having to deal with um, disrespectful customers. Um, you know, people have that's people's experience um, of being an employee. And mm -hmm. so with Uber and Lyft, we do have more flexibility, um, a bit more control. On the other side, though, we're really not independent. Um, there's a, a degree of independence, but really everything is controlled by the algorithm. Mm. It's a you, as a driver, it seems like you're on your own, but from the company's perspective, mm. they know where we all are. It's highly coordinated. There's millions of workers working together. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's a lot of aspects that we don't have control over. And there's also, we believe that they create really a, they keep the system precarious. There's mm. many issues with the app. 
um, that they could fix, and we think that they specifically they want drivers to feel insecure. They want drivers to be mm. unsure about how, exactly how the app works, unsure you know how the levers are being pulled mm. behind the curtain, which is the algorithm, and so that can be really frustrating, um, and it's incredibly unpersonal, un unpersonable. You you don't interact with a human. You interact with the, the algorithm when you, I had an issue where um, I was trying to adjust a fare that was incorrect. Mm -hmm. I called customer support. I spoke with somebody, you know, a nice enough person, but they don't have <coughs> the um, authority to deal with the issues. So when you have issues that are, are outside of, you know, what they have the authority to deal with, um, you know, they, the guy just marked it satisfactorily resolved it wasn't my issue wasn't resolved mm. and there's no way to escalate um, and they make it really difficult I mean that's by design they underfund the services so it can be quite a uh, a very frustrating experience so, when it goes yeah. wrong so you say it's very precarious what, what do you mean I mean what's it actually like to do it what's the money like what's it like on a on a normal day you know for you yeah, well, let's start with the second part, and we yeah. can talk, go back to precarity. Um, for me, I drive on the weekends because that's when the money's best. Right. You do have flexibility, but if you want to make money, you have to drive when there's a lot of customers, oh. mm. which means, um, and when there's bonuses. So the base rate, the per mile, the per minute that you get is probably just at minimum wage, and it's really dependent on the different types of bonuses, um, which are mostly on the weekend. Um, in order to actually make good money. So on the one hand, you don't have a set schedule. On the other hand, if you want to make money, you need to mm. drive during times that are, you know, most people would rather not be driving at 2 a.m. on a Friday night. I'm a young guy. I'd love to be, you know, socializing with my friends who, you know, work during the week. Right. But if I, if I work 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, I'm not going to make good money. I have to work right. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So tell us, what's the money actually like on a average thing what do you do and I assume you have a lot of expenses if you have a nice car that doesn't come cheap I assume. yeah well when the money's good I can make as much as fifty dollars an hour gross and mm -hmm. um, I estimate that's about seventy percent profit because you have I mean the increasing cost of gas um, I don't have a, a hybrid or an electric vehicle the mm. uh, the wear and tear tires depreciation um, and just other costs of businesses which are you know they definitely add up and I think a lot of drivers especially when they first start they're not aware of what the real cost of operating so they mm. see they're making $25 an hour and they think that they're making $25 an hour but really they're not um, they're making you know maybe they're making 18 once they um, factor in all those expenses. So I think uh, that's part of this business model is that they've shipped, shifted all the operating costs or most of the operating costs to the drivers and we're the ones who maintain the fleet. Oh, okay, so you've got to pay all the expenses for your car, the insurance, yeah. the gas, the oil changes. Absolutely. Uh, and car payments, everything yeah, else. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think you, have, you also have to, you know, pay the capital cost of, of the car or the car payments or whatever your All the upfront own arrangement cost. is. Yeah, right. and they also have a, I, I don't personally do this, but they have a rental um, program. And I think those drivers are really the most exploited. I mean, it's the most close to a digital feudalism where they're really almost like sharecroppers. They <clears> rent <throat> the car, so they have to pay several hundred dollars a, a week to rent the car. And then they're also sometimes getting a lower per mile and per minute rate. Oh, really? So oh. Um, it's very hard when you're making you know, small money to, to get out of that cycle. And that also puts downward pressure on our wages because anybody without a vehicle can, can drive and make these companies a lot of money and accept, you know, okay. if, you have to, if you're making less money, you have to work more. Right. Um, so they're taking a lot of trips from the so other drivers. So on a normal trip, how much money does Uber get or Lyft get, and how much do you get? Yeah, so it, it's changed considerably. Um, there's no set percentage. Hmm. Uh, some drivers think there is, but 
from my understanding, there's never been a set percentage. Um, but it used to definitely be drivers would get a larger percentage. Now, um, Uber takes between 40 and 60 percent of the fare. Hmm. Uh, so on a 15-minute trip, 20-minute trip, the passenger may, might pay you know, $18, and I might get $9, and the company would get $9. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's before like promotion surges. Um, so the most basic, simple uh, promotion is on an individual ride when there's high demand, you know, not enough drivers, probably every passenger is familiar with this, every customer, that you have to pay a higher Right. higher rate during um, those times and often they take a, a very large percentage of that surge oh, they you know do. if the surge is fifty dollars we might get five or ten dollars and they're pocketing the rest right yeah. Um, but I, it, yeah on average it ends up being 40 to right. 60 and, and you said it's very precarious for you uh, you think the algorithm does that could you explain what you mean by how yeah, is it so, precarious or you know, uncertain I guess that's yeah so what it means. it's it's uncertain for drivers, and then we would go further and say we think it's intentionally uncertain. How so? Wh okay. Why is so, it? So let's um, break that into two. So first of all, it's unclear what the, how the algorithm makes decisions um, about whether people, uh, who's getting the ride, how the promotions work. There's a lot of speculation amongst drivers and scholars and policy hmm. experts about whether, for example, people with um, non-white names are being paid less hmm. because the company suspects that those people will work for less. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, you don't know where you're going <laughs> to um, when you pick somebody up. So um, that's, that's a big challenge. And then the big thing is deactivation, that hmm. a lot of drivers experience um, deactivation and most of them uh, from the hundreds of drivers I've spoken with it's unfair deactivation deactivation is like getting fired yeah it's a it's a euphemism for being fired deactivation is five syllables for being fired That's yeah, right. maybe one or right. two maybe and and uh, it's it's often temporary because often people get reactivated so it's a little different from being fired because most people who get fired don't get right. hired back um, but it is being fired um, so, I mean, of course, you know, if you're driving drunk, if you're sexually harassing your passengers, yeah. if you're, you know, um, d just driving unsafely, you shouldn't be, dr you, you shouldn't be operating a, what's right. essentially a public utility, right? And we do need to keep our roads safe. We need to keep the business professional. You know, no driver is against that. Um, I don't think anybody wants, you know, an unprofessional industry. Um, but the issue is that, um, Drivers are deactivated unfairly. Um, for example, I mean, a common example is a passenger gets in your car, marijuana is legal in this state, they reek of weed, um, maybe they were just smoking, or, you know, I'm sure you right. know, many drivers have transported, you know, marijuana around the Commonwealth, you know, right. you can tell. Um, they get out of your car, the next person gets in, and they say, my driver was smoking weed. And they report oh. you in the app, and then it's on you to substantiate. Um, they take the, the passenger's word, which is different from the taxi system, where if you have a compl complaint against the taxi driver, there's a formal process. And, oh, and really? uh, huh. yeah, so it's basically guilty until proven innocent. And so, you know, uh, this also happens drivers being reported driving unsafely or um, for alcohol. I mean, I had one driver. He said his passenger reported him for drinking. He's never had a drink in his life. Right. Um, and on top of that, there's an incentive for passengers to um, abuse that system because sometimes you get free ride credit if you do that. Um, oh, and right. Yeah, yeah. lately uh, over the pandemic, um, there's still, I believe, a mask mandate for drivers in place. Right. Um, and for passengers, but it's on us to enforce it, right? Somebody gets into your car, they, oh, yeah. uh, they're they not wearing a mask, you tell them to put their mask on. Um, you know, if they don't comply, you can you can remove them from the car, which costs you money. Right. Um, but, 
if they do, they get in, they comply, you know, they're annoyed, they get out, and then they report you for driving unsafely, right? Oh, to I retaliate. See. And so Uber and Lyft, they put the responsibility of right. um, enforcing these restrictions on us. But if you actually enforce them, you're making yourself vulnerable to retaliation from, uh, you know, uh, this reactionary movement of people who, you know, uh, are unwilling to to right. keep us safe, right? right. You're in a con yeah. confined and space yeah, with a deadly I, I've virus. I've also potential. heard that every so often they have to do a criminal background check. And a lot of times, yeah. I, this is what I've heard, it takes a long time yeah, for so them there's a background to check. do that and then you can't work. Is that what's mm -hmm. going on? Yeah, so there's a, a background check and it, um, that's state mandated, which again is perfectly yeah. fine. We don't want, no. you know, people who have, you know, a, a a history of driving unsafely or other mm -hmm. problems. Um, yeah. You know, we want to keep the the industry safe and responsible. Sure. But what happens is you'll get your background <laughs> check pulled. Um, usually, it's every six months, and it's a two-step process. So first, they uh, the companies send it to Checker, which is a background check sort of platform. So they subcontract to Checker, and that normally takes only a few days. And then it goes to the Department of Public Utilities which is the Massachusetts mm. uh, government agency that oversees mm -hmm. um, transportation network companies, Uber and Lyft. And they run your background check as well. And that's where often the delays are. And the whole time, even if you had a clean background check before, you're out of work. And so um, my Uber background check, and I prefer driving with Uber because I find it to be better money, was out for three weeks, it was held up at the DPU, and um, I couldn't drive with Uber for three weeks. So that's um, you know another form of precarity. You know, luckily I was still had my Lyft app you know active, so I could go to Lyft. Oh, but I it was see. I took a big pay cut because. And, and what is is Mass Drivers United trying to do something about that, or what is Mass Drivers United trying to do about these various problems yeah, I mean, I think and the uncertainty? And we don't understand why a driver who has a clean background check should be off the road while their background check's being updated, mm -hmm. right? If it comes back, you know, with issues, then pull them off the road, okay. But in the meantime, it should be, you know, innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. And um, we do also want to work with... Um, and we've been in communication with the DPU mm -hmm. um, around, you know, that uh, they think that three weeks is, a, you know, an acceptable time frame. Mm -hmm. But for a worker to be out of work for somebody who needs to feed their family and pay rent, you know, our landlord right. doesn't say, oh, right. no, I, I hey, you don't have to that. pay rent this week because the DPU right. is, is too slow. So right. they really need to be fully funded. And I think with... With any government entity and with the companies, um, drivers are an afterthought uh, if, they're th if we're thought of at all. And so our job is to, um, and our goal is to give a voice to drivers and to organize drivers to make sure that our concerns are met. Right. So what is uh, Mass Drivers United really trying to do yeah. with, uh, what, what are sort of your goals here? Yeah, so we're registered as a union. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we're not unionized. We haven't won. That would be you know, right. a tremendous victory. But we are legally mm -hmm. um, a union in terms of the state and uh, a union at its simplest essence is when workers come together to fight uh, for better working conditions, fair pay, mm -hmm. um, and for respect and dignity on the job. So our goal is to win uh, a a grassroots democratic union for all app-based mm -hmm. um, app drivers, app-based transport workers. So rideshare, food delivery, and uh, even drivers like, like Amazon Flex drivers. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's yeah. working from an, from an app to do, you know, driving on a car, on a moped, I suppose a bicycle too, um, right. that's, our, that's our industry and that's, that's our goal is to have a full union with a full contract and there's a lot of um, fights that we see as stepping stones to get there because unionizing Uber, you know, we have an estimated 100 to 200,000 drivers. I mean, there's over 200,000 drivers registered in the state. Not all of them are driving. 200,000? Over 200,000 have registered. Really? So a lot of wow. those, of course, have fallen off or they only drive, you know, a little bit. But 
there's tens and tens of thousands of drivers just in Massachusetts. Wow. Um, it would be, you know, the biggest bargaining, new bargaining Work. unit in, you know, more than two decades. So it's a, it's a tremendous hurdle, um, and that doesn't even. Okay. And we have additional hurdles around misclassification. So right. we're not going to get there right away. Um, we want to find victories that we can win along the way to build power, right. build confidence. So it, what would fair play, dignity, and respect look like yeah. if you could form a union for yeah, well, uh, I've never drivers met, at Mass Drivers United? Yeah, yeah, I've never met a driver who wanted to be paid for doing nothing, right, right. for sitting in their car. We're happy to work. Honestly, I enjoy the work. I, yeah. you know, sometimes it, it stinks to be stuck in traffic, but I love the Commonwealth and I love driving around the city, exploring yeah. new places. And you get to meet some of the most amazing people, mm. um, professors from all over the world, um, bi business people, tourists, you know, uh, people from all different neighborhoods, walks of life, ethnicities, nationalities that you might mm. not otherwise meet. And so it's really, in that sense, it's a, a great job um, right. and we love the flexibility but the dignity and respect what would that really look yeah, like yeah I, I mean would I think mean? Yeah. you know first and foremost it's about pay mm -hmm. right because we don't do the work for fun we don't do the work you know to spend time to take up our days we do it for money yeah right we do it for money so that we can pay our bills and right. take care of the things that we need to do in life so having a, a fair shake of what the drivers mm -hmm. deserve the CEO the shareholders um, are not delivering passengers, they're not delivering groceries, they're not delivering food. We're the ones who do the work and we should benefit. And this, you know, 40 to 60% is unfair. It doesn't cost, you know, 50% of a ride to run the app or to run the marketing or, you know, whatever they're doing um, mm. at, at the corporate level. So, and, and we've, drivers used to be paid a lot more and there's mm. been pay cut after pay cut over the over the 10 years or so that these companies have been right. existent. So uh, a living wage, a guaranteed living wage for drivers, um, a voice on the job and power on the job, the ability if you have an issue, a legitimate issue, a legitimate concern, right. to get it adjusted, to, to have a, a grievance and, and uh, job security that you're not gonna be unfairly deactivated for no reason with no recourse. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. um, and, and also respect from the, I mean, I think in all customer-facing industries, there's this um, really problematic and sometimes terrible tyranny of the customer is always right, mm. right? This over-deference to the customer. We want to provide mm. great quality service. You know, somebody comes in from out of Massachusetts, I'm happy to tell them about the city, make sure they have a great time mm -hmm. in their visit happy to do that right. but there is absolutely abuse from customers whether they're drunk whether they're r racist you know which I don't I've had racist cu passengers and they say oh thank God you speak English expecting mm -hmm. me to you know go along with their um, you know xenophobic views right. and obviously black and brown drivers experience that on a daily basis mm -hmm. and women drivers experience tremendous sexual harassment um, and mm. to a lesser degree sexual assault. Mm. So making sure that drivers are safe um, and that there are consequences for customers, real consequences, if, you're, if a customer is malicious to drivers, if they make drivers feel unsafe, mm -hmm. that these people are barred from the, the, the platform and that drivers have, mm. have justice. And uh, so I think those are some of the big issues around dignity and justice, but really it's about being able to go to work, do your part, do your share in making mm -hmm. this economy run, and at the end of the day, um, have a f most of the value that you're creating, um, be able to, to bring that home to support your family. Right, and some of us are old enough to remember when Uber and Lyft didn't exist and you would take a, a cab from the airport or if you needed to get around town and didn't have a car. and. Uh, I don't know what's happening with the cab drivers, but I assume they had they were employees, uh, some of them anyway. Were well, employees, some of yeah, them. Yeah, it was had really an arc. Cabs. I mean, the, I mean, first of all, Uber and Lyft they don't like to describe themselves as cabs, but I believe that the original name for Uber was Uber Cab. 
Oh, right. Or it was Uber right. Taxi. I think it was Uber yeah, Cab. Yeah, right. right. So they've always been taxi services. Just two weeks ago, Uber entered an agreement with Yellow Cabs in New York to right. provide Yellow Cabs okay. through the, on the platform. We are taxi drivers. Right. right. And basically, you're at the mercy of this algorithm, which right. you don't really understand, it right. seems, how it works or right. uh, how it goes. Well, I want to thank you. Uh, do you have any other thoughts of what Mass Drivers United is, uh, is doing or what the public, those of, there are a lot of us that are not Uber drivers. Yeah, well, there's a huge question, a ballot question that Uber and Lyft are spending likely $100 million on, um, and they want to tell voters that this is going to be good for drivers. Mm. That it's about protecting our flexibility, and it's a big lie. This is the referendum the in referendum, November 2022. Yeah, which we're now calling Prop 22. That's what it was called in California. Oh, okay. Eventually, it'll have its own name. Right. But um, they are proposing a false choice, either flexibility or worker rights. And there's no law that prevents us from having right. both. Um, what we're giving up with this is the right to unionize um, all the you know hundreds of years old worker rights, uh, right. overtime, paid sick leave, minimum wage, anti-discrimination laws. Um, we would be giving those up, and um, and they're they have a really well tailored and cynical messaging strategy where Uber and Lyft and these companies, big tech, are. Um, appropriating the left, the progressive movement's narratives around race, around gender, yeah. around class. Well, let me just interrupt sure. you. If, if Mass Drivers United had a word, or a, a, you have like, we have one minute to go oh, yeah, to, sure. to uh, voters, what would you say to voters who are going to get in the voting booth in November Yeah, 22? I mean, vote no. What, what would Mass Yeah, uh, vote, vote mass no on Big United. Tech's initiative, yeah. because it's not good for drivers, you know. Um, this not is not good for drivers. It's basically. not good for drivers. It's taking away our rights. It's going to make our organization possibly illegal. Mm. We would be in violation of antitrust law as a union. Of so it's bad for the drivers. It's bad for the drivers. They're going to spend a hundred million dollars to say it's good, but the truth is that this is taking drivers' rights away. And what we really need is a full union, and we're going to keep fighting for that. Okay. Well, Henry DeGroote, thank you for standing up for Uber, Lyft, and Instacart, and all those other folks that are taking me and many other people all around the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And again, I'm Michael Jacoby Brown, your host for We Hold These Truths. We're very glad today to have had Henry DeGroote, uh, a leader in Mass Drivers United here in Massachusetts. And we look forward to seeing you at our next show. So thanks a lot for tuning in, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thanks so much, Michael. Thank you. Thanks.